live. Welcome to the 13th morning power up. We're just getting started. We're going to keep doing these, I think, forever. I don't think there's a, a situation or a future where I don't see myself doing some version of this live power up call for you guys because I enjoy them. They're a lot of fun. I like to sit here, pop open a San Pellegrino, take a sip, and share things that have helped me personally become who I am and be successful to men who I know are listening, who I know care about it and who I know will apply it to become the best versions of themselves possible and achieve their goals. You guys have the same goals I had when I was in your stage. You guys want to be wealthy. You want to be strong. You want to be successful and you want to earn the respect of those around you. You want to live true to your, your biological and inherent imperative to conquer the world. And I applaud you for it. I welcome that. And I applaud you for that. And I resonate with that. I myself agree with that. That's, that's who I am. That's what's driven me. We've got a busy day ahead of us here in the campus. We've got a review call later today. We've got, um, we're moving over completely to new boot camp system. I'm going to keep the chats open. I think the old beginner intermediate just until we get this last authentication thing t- like taken care of. And then we're going to move over entirely to the boot camp, entirely to the unit. Tomorrow, I will be announcing the first copywriting boot camp challenge where the units will compete against each other. So if you haven't made your way to a unit, you're going to want to by this month. Obviously, take your time as you go through the program. Obviously, learn the lessons, absorb the skills, but do so as quickly and efficiently as possible because you want to be in a unit. You want to be working in, in them with this competition because it's going to be fun. There's going to be a reward beyond just pure glory. So with that being said, Let's dive into the content of this call, the actual heart of what I want to talk about with you today. Now, yesterday I sent an email to the list with a link to a Mike Tyson video where he fought a Peter McNeely. I was a little kid when Tyson was popular, um, but I've sort of rediscovered him as an adult. Tyson is a very interesting figure. Most people underestimate his intelligence, especially in when it comes to things where like to do with war and battle the man the man is a dedicated warrior and that fight between him and mcneely was really interesting because you can watch their eyes as they fight before the battle starts and you can tell you can tell that mycin had decided he was going to win and mcneely knew it deep down inside that he was going to lose you can tell from their eyes you can tell from their body language you just know right that decision, that battle was won in the mind first. But Mike Tyson has another really famous quote. People talk about it all the time. And it says, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face, right? Classic quote, classic quote. And it's true. If you've ever gone into a fight at the very beginning and you think you've got a plan and you get hit in the face, you quickly realize that plan disappears, right? However, let's talk about a, a related quote. There was a guy named George, I was George Patton. It was Patton, the general, the general Patton, back in the day, World War II. He fought in Africa, defeated Rommel, invaded Italy, and did a lot to really win the war. He's a famous commander, famous strategist, famous general. And he had a quote, and he said, every, no plan survives first contact with the enemy. That means you might come up with a battle plan, you might come up with a plan for an operation, and you move forward, and you get in contact with the enemy, and then the situation's going to change, and the plan's going to die. That's the first thing that's going to die. And you're going to have to improvise and come up with a new plan. Now, these two quotes are connected, obviously. Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. And no plan survives first contact with the enemy. And they both reveal an important principle you need to embody as you seek to successfully develop your ability as a copywriter. Everybody has a plan until they get hit in the face. No plan survives first contact with the enemy. You might sit there and think, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to find this client this way. I'm going to use this outreach method. I'm going to do that. You might have an idea of how it works. But then when you approach it, things are going to change. You might think, ah, I've got a plan for the perfect cold email outreach template that I can send out to my my prospects. And you use it and it doesn't work. Some people fail to adapt their plan, right? Some people go out there and come up with this genius plan and they, they try and implement it. It dies upon first contact with reality. But instead of adapting or changing their plan, they just knuckle down and like double down on their broken plan. That's the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. I see a lot of young copywriters come in and they make that same mistake. They, they double down on their thing without pausing to evaluate the results of what they're getting 
and iterating and changing their plan. This is why I preach that OODA Loop is one of the core values of our, of our entire campus because you guys have to learn how to test your hypothesis, test your plan, make refinements on the fly and continue to iterate through this. Now, I give the example of cold email outreach. Obviously, you should send a certain number. You need a certain amount of data before you can refine that plan. You shouldn't just send one email and not get a response like, oh, I got to change my email. You should probably send like 50 to 60 before you can say, okay, I need to adjust this here. I need to adjust this here. My open rate isn't as good as I thought it was needs to be. This other thing is a change. You need to be able to get enough data, but you should iterate quickly through this. This principle applies to a lot more than cold email though. This applies to every aspect of the way you write. This applies to every aspect of the way you approach your study of copywriting. You need to learn to have a plan, test it, and no, full on knowing that chances are that plan that you created is not going to work. That's another reason why there's such a bias toward action and doing and trying inside of the campus because planning is cool, but it only has value up to a point. It's important to do the exercise. It's going to prepare you for some additional contingencies. It's going to get you thinking along the right lines so that when you take action, so that when you try out your plan against the enemy and you see that it changes or you need to adapt, you have something to draw from. You've already in that mind space and you're able to quickly come up with a new plan, iterate and attack using that new plan. You guys need to develop this ability. It's key. This is foundational to being successful as a man. Again, I love likening and comparing the path of copywriting mastery with war because it is what we are designed for. And this is an important aspect, this important mental aspect of success is being able to come up with a plan, but then being willing to iterate and change on that plan as you move forward, right? Because the consequences are dire. Lesser men stick with their plan until the very, very end. Greater men will iterate, improve, and refine their plan based on the results and the feedback they're getting from their environment. Darwin said it. He said it's not, it's not people used to, used to think, and a lot of people think that Darwin said, like, the strong will survive or, like, evolution favors the strong. That's not necessarily true. If you look at it, evolution favors the adaptable. Whoever is the most adaptable, whoever is the most agile when it comes to adjusting and tailoring their efforts to their environment, the conditions of their environment, those are the species that are able to successfully reproduce. Whoever evolves in ways that make them more adaptable and more fit for their environment, those are the ones who win. In the copywriting world, the copywriters who are able to take where they learn and adapt it to their situation, the quickest and most agile, in the most agile manner, those are the ones who win. That counts across everything in life. If you want to win, if you want to be successful, you need to develop the ability to be adaptable. Come up with a plan, understand the foundations, understand the basic psychological things that will never change, that sort of core truth copywriting and outreach and sales and all of that, understand that on a fundamental level and then be willing to adapt and learn how to adapt on the fly as you go through and actually apply the stuff in your life. That's gonna give you the ability to succeed where other less flexible men cannot. Too many people are afraid of changing their plans because it's gonna require some effort and there's an element of risk to it. My friends, as a man, as someone who is seeking to achieve great things, you are going to have to take risks. But the beautiful thing, the more risks you take, the more intelligent risks you take, you begin to understand that risk really isn't as bad as you think it is. Usually you can mitigate your downside and test things quickly and short and easily and, and get the benefit without overexposing yourself to too much risk. But the, the more you can lean into that, the more you can lean into the testing, the more you can lean into trying new things, even if they're going to fail, even in spite of knowing the fact that they probably will fail, if you can go through that as many times as possible, as quickly and as intelligently as possible, you will be able to iterate your way to a plan that actually works, a successful operations, a successful set of operations that you can use to get what you want out of your environment. This is key. Remember Mike Tyson. Remember Patton. I think it was George Patton. No, it can't have been George Patton. I, it's really funny that I'm blanking his name. Remember what they said. Those guys were very successful. Tyson, an extremely successful boxer. Patton, an extremely successful general. And warriors and generals and fighters have said the same thing over and over since the dawn of human time. If you look at the people who are most successful in your life, they are those who are able to adapt to their circumstances. That's how you win. That's how you survive. That's how you're successful. You need to learn how to apply this principle to copywriting, apply it to what you're doing as you write, as you read, as you study, as you do your outreach, as you hop on sales calls, 
learn to plan, but learn to adapt, learn to change your plan in, in essence or in accordance with the feedback you get from your environment. My friends, this is a, a daunting path you have all undertaken. This is difficult. This is going to require massive personal transformation of who you are as a person. You're going to have to expand your mental abilities. You have to expand your discipline. You have to expand your mind and your skill set and your perspective on life to be successful. Most people aren't successful because they aren't the person who deserves or has earned that, that success. They're a small person. They have a small mind. You need to develop a big mind, a big perspective, big capacity so you can achieve and receive greater rewards. That's why most people aren't successful. That's why most people stay small little sheep that watch Netflix is because they stay small. They don't expand their minds. When you've met truly great men, when you have met people who have extreme levels of mastery, who have conquered m across all elements of their life and you meet them and you're in their presence, you realize how much farther you have to go. You realize that you are nowhere close to your potential. You have the whole rest of your life to catch up and try and increase your ability. The great men of history, the conquerors, the great, anyone who's achieved anything noteworthy have all expanded themselves to become 10 times, a hundred times more human than your average sheep, right? They, their, their mind, their mental capacity, their spirit is so much larger. You desire the life of that man. And you must be willing to put in the work to become that. It's going to be difficult. There's going to be hardships. You're going to make mistakes, but that's okay. If you are relentless and if you promise to yourself that no matter what happens, no matter how hard you get knocked down, that you will always get up, that you will fight forward relentlessly, focused on becoming that man, then you'll be able to be successful. It'll be difficult. It'll be hard. And you're going to learn and grow and you have some amazing stories along the way. But the process I'm teaching you is going to be difficult. There's going to be trials and failures before you get to those successes. But that's how you earn success. My friends, it's been a great morning power up call. I will speak to you guys again in a few hours when we do the actual re copy review call. We go over some good principles. I've reviewed some of the copy. It looks really interesting. We're going to have some good comments, some good discussions. Take these ideas, ponder on them, think about them. Think about how you can apply them to different areas of your life and then go out and take massive action on them. These ideas can transform and give you more personal power and allow you to reach your goals much faster. These are fun calls. We're going to keep doing them. I'm excited to talk to you guys later today. Until then, let's go out. Let's go take some money. Let's go get some work done. Let's go achieve our dreams.